Hello my YouTube friends, alerts are an awesome way to make live streams more interactive. You can use them to notify you when you have a new subscriber, super chat, donation, or even memberships. When you have fun alerts, it can really encourage folks to donate more, which for a live streamer just starting out is a big deal. So today, I want to show you an easy way to create custom alerts like this one using free software. So let's get to it! My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? Let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer and I've helped you out in the past, well why not subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any of my new content. I'm gonna be using DaVinci Resolve to create our animated alerts today. It's totally free to use and there are links in the description so you can download it and follow along with me. That's the best way to learn, right? So let's jump into Resolve and do this. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to click New Project. I'm going to call this Project Particle Alert and click Create. And once we're in DaVinci, I'm going to go to File and then I'm going to go to Project Settings. And here I want to make sure that everything matches my OBS output. So 1920 by 1080 and I work in a frame rate of 30 frames per second. So I want to make sure that this is, says 30 frames per second. And if you work in 60 frames per second, you're going to want to mark yours for 60. It all depends. Then I'm going to click save. And of course, that's all the settings for your live stream. Now we're gonna right click on no media clips media pool and I'm going to click create fusion clip and I'm gonna name this clip alert and I'm just gonna change this duration and uh, I think I'm gonna make it 10 seconds long. And my frame rate, I wanna make sure that's 30 and I'm gonna drag this clip down here into my timeline and you can see that this clip is completely empty. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna click on fusion in the bottom here and we have just our media out and that is what produces the actual video up here in our boxes and I'm gonna just change this so we only have one box up top here for viewing and I'm going to just change it to 25% so we can see the whole box and now I'm going to click this right here this is for the particle emitter I'm going to drag that down here and we're also going to drag this one here which is the particle render node and we're going to connect this to the media out and now we can see that we've got uh, some little dots in there and it's in our frame and of course it seems to have reset to fit so I'm I'm gonna once again change it to 25% and there we go. So now the particle emitter creates particles that will create the look that we're going for. And so I wanna go into style here and under style, I'm gonna select bitmap. And a bitmap is just an image that we're going to use for our particles. So now I'm gonna go into my media source here and we're gonna find the media source I wanna use and I'm just gonna drag it down here into my nodes and then I'm gonna connect it up to the particle emitter. So now you'll see we have this little heart PNG that I used and we can use the controls to change the number of hearts that are in our little circle and we can go to the size controls under style and change the size of our hearts and we can also adjust the variance. So some of those hearts will be bigger and some will be smaller and the higher you set this, the more variance there's obviously going to be in the size of our particles. But I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go back into controls and if we adjust our random seed, you can see that it places those hearts in all kinds of different locations. And I'm going to go into region and I'm going to set my region to cube. And this changes it from a circle to a square. And I'm going to adjust the width out a little bit. So it's kind of like a box. Then I'm going to drag this up to the top left hand corner of my little view screen here. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go back into controls. And I want to go down here to velocity and we're going to adjust this up a little bit. And what velocity does is it adds a little bit of movement to our particles. And then I need to change the angle on my particles and I'm going to move my timeline down so I can see where my angle is. And now I just want it to kind of fall down the screen. That's, that's what I want to do here. So I want to set this to about 90 degrees and I'm just going to move this over to the edge of the box a little bit and we're going to adjust the number down. Obviously, you want this to look more, you know, like little hearts falling, but we don't want it to look like a massive cascade. I want it to be a little more subtle. 
So I'm gonna adjust this angle here exactly 90 degrees, in this case, negative 90 degrees. And I'm gonna adjust the velocity variance, which means that some of the balloons or some of the little hearts will fall faster than others. And I think now I have this set up the way I want it. So if I click play, you can see my little hearts just fall down the screen here. Pretty cool, really neat effect. And it's so simple to create. Now you can play around with all of these different settings for the emitter. Um, they all work basically the same. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe this. So we start at zero. I'm gonna go all the way down here to about 270. And I'm going to go ahead and click that number again to set it at 0.8. And then I'm gonna go to the end and set it at zero. What this is gonna do is it's going to trail off the number of little hearts that are created between frame 270 and frame 300. And now we'll click play, we'll watch this go. And we're gonna see, what I'd like to do is have all the hearts disappear by the end of the animation. And you can see that doesn't really do it. So what I'm gonna do is adjust the location of where these clips begin and end or where the keyframe is. So I'm gonna first go all the way to the end. I'm gonna right click on this little keyframe and remove the key. So now it turns white again. And we're going to go and move that up to the 290 frame and we'll add that keyframe and turn it to zero again. And now if we play it, we'll see if we just get that completely tapered off little heart bubble thing. And you'll see at frame 270, it starts to produce less hearts. And unfortunately, we're not really getting exactly what we're looking for. So I'm gonna have to move these again. I'm gonna go to frame 260 and I'm gonna set the number keyframe. I'm gonna go to the next keyframe and you can do that just by clicking the arrows and I'm gonna remove that one. Then I'm gonna go to the next one and remove that key. And we're gonna move our zero keyframe here to 280. And there we go, we created a zero keyframe there. I want these balloons to just kind of travel all the way off the screen at the end of the animation so it looks natural, they don't just magically disappear. And well, we're getting a little closer here, but we're gonna obviously have to move it farther up. So I'll go to frame 250 and I'll set my keyframe at 0.8 there and move to the next one. And I'm gonna remove this keyframe. And then I'm gonna move to 270 and set this keyframe number to zero. And at 280, I'm just gonna delete this keyframe here by right clicking and clicking remove. And now when I click play, let's see if we get our hearts all disappearing off the end of the screen. Sometimes this can take a little bit of trial and error, so it is what it is, but it's so simple and easy to do, and we're still not getting it to all fall off the screen by the end. So we'll just readjust one more time here. And I think that's gonna do what I want it to do. I think that's gonna be just fine. So if we click play, we'll run it through one more time, but I think this one is going to work just fine. And there we go. And that's close enough for a town this size. So the next thing we need to do is we're gonna go into edit and we can see our animation here and we can click play and you can see exactly what it would look like as an alert overlay on your screen. And of course, sometimes it gets a little choppy because it is rendering this on the fly, but it seems like it's gonna work pretty well. I think that's what we're looking for. So we wanna output this, we're gonna go down and click on deliver. And up here, we're gonna name our file. Let's call this one heart alert. And we're gonna set the location where we want this file to go by clicking browse. And you just go to the location where you wanna save your alert overlay file and click save. Now we're gonna go down here and the format should be QuickTime. The codec needs to be uncompressed. And then our type has to be BGRA 8-bit, which gives us the alpha. And then we wanna check export alpha and make sure our resolution and our frame rate are correct. Then we add it to the render queue and we go over here to the right and we click render all. And this is just going to render it out for us. And it's only 10 seconds, so it shouldn't take very long. I know the preview looks choppy, but it won't be when it's finished. Now we need to go into our shutter encoder. There is a link in the description if you wanna download it. This is totally free. And we just wanna click browse and we wanna to go to our heart alert we just created and open that up. Now under choose function, we wanna to go to VP9 and we wanna select change and then select the directory where we want our output file for this to be saved. And there we go. Now we wanna go over here and select max quality and then under advanced features, 
we want to select enable alpha channel. And now we're all set. We can just click start function and this will create our heart alert in a WebM format, which is much, much smaller than the format that was created by DaVinci Resolve. And you really want to do this. You don't want these big Hocken files. As soon as this is exported, I will show you exactly the size difference that you have with this file. And believe me, it's still going to be in more than good enough quality. Well, you'll see that in a second. So here we are in File Explorer and you see the original heart alert is almost two and a half gigs. The VP9 heart alert is seven megs. It's really that much of a huge difference. So in OBS, we have our video capture device. Now I'm going to go into Streamlabs and I want to set up the alert box. That is the widget we're going to set up here. And you can go ahead and select which alert you want to set up. So in my case, we're going to go and we're going to select donation. And there we go. Now there are a lot of different things that you can set up here, the way the text appears and all that kind of stuff. And you can play around with this, but we're going to click this button here and we're going to go to uploads and we're going to upload our VP9, the heart alert and click open. And then we just want to select it and click select. So now we have our heart alert. If we want to set audio, we can click this little button here next to sound and you can go to uploads and upload any audio you like, or you can use one that's already set up in here. I already uploaded some audio, so I'm just going to go ahead and select one of those. And then I'm going to just click select when I'm finished. So now we have our video and our audio file. You can adjust your sound volume. I'm going to adjust the alert duration. Now I know the alert is 10 seconds, so I want to go with nine seconds for this alert just to make sure it fades out properly. And I want a text alert delay of one second. And then if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you just click save settings. And now what we want to do is scroll all the way up to the top and copy right here on the widget URL. Now we're going to go back into OBS and I'm going to click the plus and go to browser. And I'm going to call this one heart alert and click OK. And then right here under URL, I'm just going to control V and paste in the thing we just copied from Streamlabs. I'm going to change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080, which is the actual size of my live stream. We want to control audio if there is any in OBS. And we want to go ahead and click these two boxes down here, refresh the cache. And now our alert should be set up. So let's go into our Streamlabs and we'll go ahead and test this. So we're going to test donation which is what we just set up. You just click that right here, flip back over, and you can see our little hearts going. But this does not really look how we want it to look. It's not set up and framed properly. It, it's, yeah, it's not right. So let's go back into Streamlabs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the CSS, and we're gonna add our own custom code in here. And this is really simple, so don't worry. We wanna scroll down to alert box, and where it says position, we wanna change that from absolute to relative. So in other words, we want our heart box to be relative to the size of our screen that already exists. And we have to change this one more place. Down here under alert image, we wanna go ahead and modify that position also to relative. Right now it says absolute, we want it to be relative. So we're going to go ahead and just change that. And now all we need to do is go down here and save our settings. And it's good to save these a couple of times because sometimes it takes a couple times. If we click this test donation, there we go. Now our hearts are filling the screen like they're supposed to. And that's what we'll see in the alert. But the text is missing now. And that's kind of a pain. So we have to fix our text now. We have to locate the text where we want it to be. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to this alert text right here, and we're going to change that position from relative to absolute, because we wanna tell the text exactly where it's going to be. So there we go. We changed that to absolute, and now what we wanna do is add another line, and we're going to click left colon, and we're going to add the position from the left hand side of our screen and we're going to use 75 pixels and then we're going to use a semicolon at the end here i'm just going to go back to the beginning and tab this so it's located in the right spot and then i'm going to go to the end and click enter and then i'm going to type top colon space 
and we're going to put this at 900 pixels. So that means from the top, it's going to be 900 pixels down and semicolon. Then I'm just gonna move this over to the right spot. I'm gonna go down here and click the save settings and we'll flip back over. We'll hit test donation and we'll flip back over and there we go. We can see that our text is now in the exact location that we put it and it looks really pretty nice. So there are all kinds of things that you can do with this once you figure out how to create these custom locations. Maybe I don't like the box at the bottom. I wanna put it at the top. So instead of 900 pixels, I change it to 80 pixels and click that save. Make sure I click it a couple times and I could go to test donations and there we go. Now our text is moved to the top of our alert. It's that easy to move this text around once you figure out how to just do these simple adjustments in the CSS code. Now I wanna move this out a little bit, maybe not 75 pixels, we'll try 100 pixels. Click the save settings, just want it to be more centered. Click test donation and there we go. Now it seems like it's much more centered on our little heart display. Now I think what I want to do is I want to adjust the font settings. I want our font to be a little bigger. So we're going to adjust the font size. And you can see you can change the font here and do all kinds of fun stuff, but we're going to use 56 pixels. I'm going to click save a couple times and test this and let's see. Ooh, that's nice. That's much more easily visible and all that kind of stuff. I like it. I just want to move that position so it's a little more centered. So now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to adjust my left position instead of 100 pixels. Let's say maybe 75 pixels. I like that. We'll go down here and we'll click that save a couple times and then we'll use the test donation button and flip over into OBS. And there we go. That looks pretty awesome. Now we've already set up one of our custom widgets. It's really that simple. So if we wanted to change the custom widgets for any of our alerts, and we could make them all different if we wanted to, but what we wanna do if we wanna make them all the same is just go ahead and copy this CSS code right out of here. So I just select it all and I right click, go to copy. Now I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna select the subscribers and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna change my upload and I'm gonna select that heart VP9 and select that. And I wanna make sure that the layout is this text over and I'm gonna adjust my alert duration to nine seconds and I'm gonna adjust the delay alert, make sure it's one second. And then I'm gonna to go to the CSS and I'm just gonna select everything and control V and paste in from the other one. And you can see it's changed. There we go. We have our left and our top position and everything else. I'm gonna click save settings a couple of times and I wanna go ahead and open this font setting. I'm gonna set this to the font size of 56 pixels, make it the same and scroll down here and click that save settings button a couple times. We're going to test subscriber and flip over to OBS. And you can see, oh, that draws totally different than our other one did. So that's not good. It doesn't put just subscribed on another line. Well, that's all right. If these are a little bit different, we'll survive. Let's go back in and I'm going to go ahead and adjust my font size down to 28. Now I think we'll go to 32 pixels. Click save settings a couple times and test subscriber. And there we go. That doesn't look too bad. Just need to center it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm going to change the position of my text on the left from 75 pixels. Let's try 50 pixels and I'm gonna save the settings a couple times. Click test subscriber, flip over, and that looks better. That's pretty centered. That's not too bad. You can see that this is a pretty powerful tool and it's really, really easy to set one of these up and now you know how to customize it and move your text around. Pretty awesome. There are so many ways to use the particle system in Resolve. The only limit is really your imagination, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'd really like to hear about what sort of custom alerts you want to see me show you how to create. So let me know in the comments. And if you want to see how to create a custom animated overlay, here's a playlist with a bunch, and they're all free, so check it out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.